All right, so we'll continue the binomial theorem here. We're going to expand x plus 1, sorry, x plus y, all to the power of 3, uh, by using the binomial theorem. So here, n is equal to 3, okay? That's what you need to remember. How many terms, <laughs> should I actually circle the 3? Okay, I totally missed it. <laughs> okay, I just crossed it out. Okay, so how many terms are we going to have in this expansion? We're going to have four terms here. Okay, because there's n plus 1 terms. Uh, okay, now, what we want is we want to get the, use the binomial theorem, <coughs> which says, so I go 3C0, and then I go 3C1, and then 3C2, and then 3C3. Okay, so now I've got them all, right? Now for the variables. So I've got x. What is the power on the x going to be here? 3. What about the y? Zero. Zero. Okay, so what's going to happen to the powers on my x now? They're going to go down 1 each time. And then what's going to happen to the powers of my y? Four. They're going to go up 1. All right. <coughs> so now we just have to evaluate each of them. What is 3C0? 1. What is x to the power of 3? x to the power of 3. And then y to the power of 0 is? 1. Okay, what is 3C1? It's 3. x squared is x squared and y1. And then what is 3C2? That is also 3. So I get x to the power of 1, and then y squared. And now C3C is 1, x to the power of 0 is 1, and then y to the power of 3. All right, so those are all my terms using the binomial theorem and writing it out as your answer. So x plus y to the power of 3 is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared y1 plus 3x1 y squared plus y cubed, okay? So there you go. That's it. Now, we can also use Pascal's triangle. Uh, it's got a lot of nice patterns that are directly related to our binomial theorem, okay? So what I'd like to note here is that this is going to be for when n is equal to 1. This is going to be for when n is equal to 0. So I've got 0, 1. So these are the exponents on my binomial, my binomials. So here, this is going to be for n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, n equals 6, and n equals 7. And then what would it be for n equals 8? Can you guys guess based on this pattern yet or not really? Okay, so 1, and then we're adding these two together, and we get 8. So if we add these two together, what do we get? 28, add these two together, we get 56. Add these two, 70, add these two, 56. So what do you notice is happening so far? Now it's going down and it's gonna be symmetric. So it's, the next one should be 28, and then eight, and then one. Okay, so just another thing, just to look at all the different patterns that we have here. Um, which row, which row, now if I call this one row one, this one row two, row three, row four, row five, I'm gonna link it to example one. So which one of these rows matches up with the example that we just did up here?
okay? It matches up with row four. That has n equal to three. Right, the number of terms, exactly. So the row corresponds to the number of terms in each row. Row nine, down there, okay. Now, uh, what's the relationship between if I draw a triangle amongst these numbers? What's the relationship there? All right. So if I take these two, I add them together, and I get? Right. So I can do that anywhere on Pascal's triangle. So if I go 10 plus 5, what do I get? I got 15, right? All right. So I can take these two at the top, and I get 6. So there's lots of fun patterns in there, and you could kind of spend some little more time and see if you guys uh, want to you know, see what else you can discover. Okay, so we've already done part A. And now let's uh, write out what the connection between Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem is. So what's the connection between Pascal's triangle? So we can look at the n plus first row of the triangle to find the coefficient of the terms in the binomial theorem, in the binomial expansion. <coughs> okay, so now here, Determine the numeric coefficient of the sixth term of the binomial expansion of x plus y to the power of 7. <coughs> Which row is this going to be? This is going to be row 8. Right. So what are the, what are the, what does their eighth row look like? It looks like 1, 7, 21. 35, 35, 21, 7, 1. So what we're looking at, which term number? This is term 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're actually looking for 21. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now... Explain a situation in which Pascal's triangle does not give the coefficients of each term of the expansion. All right, so it works. It works when you've got, it works for simple ones where you have, it works for simple binomials. that are like x plus y, x plus y to the power of 7, for instance, right? But as soon as either term has a coefficient, as a term has a coefficient, like for example, uh, if it was 2x plus x squared, for instance, that to the power of 8, then it will no longer work. So as soon as you change, so as soon as you throw in a coefficient like that, so, or, or for example, if you had, uh, 3x plus 5y to the power of 7. So if you have, yeah, so as soon as you change it up a little bit, it's not going to work anymore. Okay, so uh, in the next one, we're going to do finding a specific term. I'm going to end this video now.